What is up, guys? It's your boy, GRC. How's everyone doing? We got 37 in here. Let's read them off. Terrafin, first in the chat. Warden, quick second. You're usually first. That's a tough one. Terrafin's coming back. My Hex Toy. Hexican Papa. Good morning, guys. PDC, RH Max. What up, guys? There's a lot going on in crypto. I'm always fashionably late. It's the green room talk. Because it's, it allows you to go till 10 minutes, so it's hard not to sometimes. Uh, GRCC took the dogs out. Yeah, I'm always taking... I don't even have a dog, but dogs are already out. Always out with GRC. Didn't rip the bong. The bong... <laughs> you didn't rip the bong. The bong ripped GRC. Nice. Very true. I've, I've literally smoked a bong in five years, I don't think, of any sort. I don't even like... That big contraption, I don't even know. Seems like it would hurt. Um, Frack, everybody good to see you guys. Real quick, I need 250 retweets on a tweet. I know it sounds like a tall order, but you know it's not. For, when, when Silver messaged me this morning, he said 250 on this tweet and we're live. And I said 250? Those are rookie numbers. Come on. I thought it was going to be this monumental goal that I had to pass. But we're, let's see where we're at now, and I'm going to post it below, guys. Seriously, though, I've been trying to get Silver the Antidote or Silver Antidote on this flipping stream since the day I got on Twitter and started the stream and did all that stuff. Guys, I want him on. He's got all that juicy, 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 juicy alpha. So, Sam, he's one of those guys. He literally just watches the buys and sells. Like He just like basically keeps the chart up of the volume and just like watches – like what's going on and kind of just reports on it. Like he just like writes a little blurb like this account who is known for dumping on this date, that date and this date is, has a state coming up. And I think this is a potential dumper. So like he'll do stuff like that and it'll kind of warn people. But I was really just super interested in his insight in the chain analysis, in diving into stuff because I'm, I'm getting more into the liquidity providing world. And that's really important over there. You know, you got to pay attention to a lot of these things. If there's one dude who, you know, has a fat bag and you know, he's about to get nuked for some reason, or like he got liquidated in another account. It's important to understand all that on chain. That's what I'm trying to get good at. And I really enjoy it. So guys retweet this tweet and we will go to the break guys. We got a lot going on at crypto in the morning. It's, it's just ridiculous. I can't say any of this shit because bullish just tells me not to, but it's very exciting. Retweet that guys. Crypto in the morning, DeFi proof, one minute, nine seconds, guys. I will see you in a minute. Retweet that 250 antidotes coming on tomorrow morning. If that's 250 by the morning, you understand? Help me. You already know what time it is. Crypto in the morning. Crypto in the morning. Crypto in the morning. Tuned in. Got me some hex and I'm making a stay. Got me some heads on, I'm making it rain. Give me some maxi and that's just in case. Jim Renner sent me to show you the way. Crypt in the morning. Good, dude. We we've seen a hundred percent increase in the price of Ethereum, and now wait, twenty percent pullback. Are you talking about like the last little price movement, and now you're talking about last couple of days? From nine hundred to two thousand. Nine hundred. That's, that's a big move. That's a big move. We we act like it's not a move, but I think about other people like in like, right, and I'm like, damn, dude. But but again, Sam. Remember, there's always, ugh, I need to say this before, there's always opportunity. If you buy a coin, there's likely going to be a 20% pump on that coin if it has product market fit, if it's the right coin, and you're not, we're not talking about the meme coins here. So, Sam, that basically means 
if you are paying attention, even passively, like maybe daily would be a good way to do it. You can make 20% gains like all the time. But again, that's you're I don't think you'll feel the freedom to do that if you don't understand the staking protocols, all of these st- options, because you got to understand the options first. And then I think it's the best way. But I mean, there's always a premium. The first time you bought ETH in your fucking life, it went up like 30% in the fucking two days. You were like, no, should right. I just keep it? Like, what the fuck? You <laughs> <laughs> were just like, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, this works? And I was like, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's crazy. Um, and going going through this process, I want to I wanna also mention the tornado cast thing in a minute, but going through this process with providing liquidity and earning, you know, a thousand bucks a day plus, um, I continue to evolve like how I want, how, like how do I want to approach this, right? Like earning the fees and like, am I just going to continue to reinvest it or should I put it, it, pull some off or that kind of thing? So last night when I was journaling or writing down my goals and, and all that kind of stuff, I think what I'm going to start doing with the LP is pulling five or, and also talking to uh, bullish as well. Um, th- what's up bullish. Um, I'm going to start probably pulling five to 10% per day uh, and putting that into uh, something that was a stable coin. So then I'm like, okay, do I want this in USDC or tether or die or packs or whatever? And I was like, I think what I'll probably do is start actually putting it into just Icosa as, 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 as like the stable coin, right? We've seen, we've seen a drop. I haven't checked the price of Icosa today, but we have seen a drop since launch in Icosa. But um, I think that it seems healthy esque though, for a launch. Like it, I, I love looking Sam, do you remember when I said, when Hedron was low, 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 and I said, I think this is going to even out right at the launch price and go sideways from there. We are stuck on that launch price, man. Stuck That's where we're price. at right now? Yeah, well, yes. Ever since that big psh, and then the equal out, because it was over, so over. I even texted you. I said, overbought, it's over, then oversold. I said it was overbought. I said, just give yourself a second before you go at that, Sam. I texted him. And in my opinion, I said, in my opinion, I think we're just that hair oversold, little too much news, little too much uh insider trading and then i was but now we're just really stuck on that launch price which is like maybe this is what we were kind of seems healthy which is a good sign to me Uh, yes 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 oh and i'm still like i know we've talked about it every day for the last four days i am going to be purchased i have been uh since the launch of icosa i will be purchasing uh hedron every day like i'm just going to be purchasing hedron every day a little a little bit just a little bit every day because i understand what's happening i understand this is how this is going to play out in in the future like we we see this we're taking a look at this we understand that there's going to be gargantuan amount of demand for hedron the amount of uh yield in icosa that i earn in the icosa pool is going to skyrocket because at the 90 day mark because there's going to be a boatload of burn here that's just going to give me options to do more stuff and and i don't 30 percent of the supply if you uh include the oa as a non-seller for that wow. uh for that hsi auction uh estimate for the dump price so, so what I'm going to paraphrase to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. We've got about 91, 92 trillion hedron mm-hmm. and, and about 30 trillion or 27 trillion hedron are basically off the market is what you're saying, yes, which sir. is, which is, which is massive, massive. Cause you have, <laughs> you, you, you have, it is, it's just great. Right? No, it's like, doesn't even make sense. It's too massive. It doesn't. It's too massive. I'm scared, bro. I'm but then, bro, scared, bro. Five hundred dollars get you slippage. My eyes will be able to look at the screen, dude, because I can only do math. I, I've always been good with math in my head. I don't know shit about math on a calculator, but I could do like really quick, intuitive math in my own head. I'm nothing that I ever share, and the math is turning into a little fucking fudge ball at the end of the path, and I can't. I'm like <laughs> nuclear games, like <laughs> like I can't calculate. Because that 83x from premium value is what we were talking uh, 83x from the uh, fair trade value uh, of of Hedron, just as a just to show the chart for the B share, I guess that was what it was pinned on. It's just a lot of upside. And if you guys know anything about the bull market that's coming up at some point here, you never know. It could be tomorrow. It could be probably more so like a month. I'm thinking we're getting close. You know it. 
and that's just my opinion. I don't, this is my true opinion. I don't, now that I've just gathered all this information over fucking 200 days straight, my heart is telling me, you know, we got, we're just going to take the max pain dump. There's going to be rules, news, crazy month, and then it's going to be over. And everyone's going to be sitting there without money. So you think it's going to be like a boom, done with very quick. Well, it's not, I mean, this has been a long ass time of people being broke too. Like people don't, it's been a long time since we had pumps. Like there's been no, I, I mean, don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I had pumps <laughs> nuclear pump. Though. I mean, we're talking like fucking crazy pumps, like never ending weeks of pumping, which is kind of like, um, but so, so is that, that's what, that's what you're talking about for a bear market. Cause I haven't been in the market long enough to see, I'm sorry, a bull market. I don't know that- because that whole recession thing, I watched the bull market recover from 2019 or like 2018, but then I watched the COVID crisis happen and people said that was more black swan but i think it was kind of like baked in if you know to like the whole entire it's hard to explain like there's so many factors but at the end of the day i feel like they they have enough resistance to just kind of fix whatever's going on it seems like at this point they have the people are okay right now everyone's kind of like yeah everyone's getting shot in the streets in the city but other than that everyone's you know they're making it somehow manageable for people to survive with no money. And I, you know what I mean? Like, like I feel like everyone's surviving on no money and they can't pay for gas and they're hiding in their houses, but how long can that happen before it just, it pops? You know what I mean? Doesn't it feel like there's a breaking point where people are like, Oh, I just don't have option anymore. And then the market uh, liquidates you, your houses or whatever. I, I think that there could be a lot of volatility between now and the election. Right, because Democrats, unless they're a lot more cheating, like there was a couple of years ago, uh, are going to get fucking manhandled. Like, Tell me about it, election it, stuff for me, because that's just something I have never even. You've been balls deep in that understanding, I'm sure. I've seen your posts. I never watched them because I just didn't know politics. It was interesting, but I saw them, and I was so I assumed what what does an election in the United States of America? And we're talking crypto, the whole world. This is for me and the audience. What does it mean? What implications can it have? What if there's cheating, if there's other things, what real implications can that have if there's foul play or whatever? Well, first, let's start internationally. So given that the stuff that I do with like my company and the fitness space that I'm in um, and even in crypto, I talk to a lot of people that are international. And it's, it's fascinating to me that people who are living in other countries know our election cycle and certain people who are in government better than people who live in this country. And these are coming from outside this country. So when you think about that, whatever happens here in the United States has a impact internationally, right? And then it has, that has a, you know, second or third order ripple effect, how it goes through, but coming into the midterm, um, which is what, so there's, there's, you know, this, I think there's the Senate, there's a certain number of houses for the Senate in the house that are up for, um, election. There was a bunch of Democrats who was like, Hey, I'm not running again because they're going to get fucking manhandled. And because they're just probably get a lot of like hate from their constituents because they don't agree with anything that they're doing. But going into this, there's going to be a lot of FUD, uh, from the media, right. Pointing in one direction. Um, and I what think are that they're going to fucking say like, Oh, you're going to be broke, but Biden's a nicer guy. But what what are they saying to Ray Trump's Trump's you know a former oh president? Oh my god, that was insane! I forgot about that, dude. That's legit. Like they raided his shit. Do people put this into perspective for a second? Whether you like Trump or not, whether he's crazy, rapist, I don't fucking know his life. None of my business. To be honest, I don't give a shit. But for you to be walking around with a brain on this earth in SWAT team, SWAT team, fucking SWAT team, assault rifles. I know how that shit goes. Even former when- former president. Dude, he's the former president of the United States of America. People have lost their fucking minds. They don't know what way is up or down. You don't know about Trump. If someone came into my house I, and with SWAT team and all that shit, and looked, I would feel devastated. Like I had no more options in this world. I would have to leave if I wasn't incarcerated. Because I would feel that I'd feel like, okay, this, they really can't cut like my back. It's like going into a war without a gun. It's like, oh baby, I'll protect you, but I don't have a gun. Everyone else has a gun. It's this like is, not possible. 
and this is this is why it's I think it's fascinating to put this into the crypto space, right? Because Ethereum's already seen a twenty percent sell off. Hex got up to about seven cents and it's down in four cent range now, four point seven. I think it was last time. Loving that, by the way, loving. And, and and maybe maybe this is where we start to see that that big sell off. Um, I think BTC was up it's 23, 24,000 and it's around 21 now. Um, I, we don't honestly, we don't have any fucking idea, but well, I do think that there could be that big sell off. Like something has to happen as in like, there's a bunch of balloons and somebody takes something to scare everybody and pops a balloon. And that creates this like igniting, uh, so to speak of, of, of energy. Right. And, and that the, the, media will take that balloon popping metaphorically speaking and create that into something that is not which then scares idiots who don't know what they're doing and that creates the ripple effect where people start selling off or they transition from risk on assets to risk off assets and in that in that is where the market tanks um you know i i see that potentially happening uh, you know on the, on the other hand on the other hand like there is positive stuff happening like in for crypto specifically with the coinbase and blackrock you know the largest asset manager in the world and they're partnering up right so if they and then they set up their trust right so if if there's a you know influx of institutional capital coming into crypto um that that news in and of itself uh i had a buddy who is a financial um like planner for people and he goes on he posted on facebook the other day hey, anybody who's thinking about crypto before they're buying any like index funds is doesn't know what they're doing and i was like bro you are fucking taking your clients to the toilet right and then you're just shoving them into the stall and then like you're doing one of the worst things you could possibly do for your fucking clients by talking them out of the best performing asset in the world. And you don't need to believe me. Look what's happening in the effing market. The largest asset manager in the effing fucking world, right? $10 trillion of assets under management just set a partnership to put money into crypto. The best performing asset in the world. And you're telling your clients to not get into crypto? Like, what the F is wrong with you? How do you do something like that? Like, I can't do that. You can't well, do that they stuff. just play off of not understanding anything. Cause like, it's like they, they just, they're always going to side to ignorance instead of studying harder. Right? Like why would they study harder for what? For their client? Why? Who cares? They're not allowed to do shit anyway. They're not even allowed to buy Ethereum. I'm sure. You know what I mean? So guys, it's that bad. It's that bad. They can't even buy assets. Like you're giving all your wealth to someone who cannot possibly by the rules created beat inflation unless they fucking do some magic magic which they will not be doing <laughs> no magic so, what is it i just got this in the mail last night i have not set it up yet this is a uh, ledger nano s plus uh it's a 79 dollar one or 80 dollar one uh ledger uh, i got one because i would like to see uh treasure versus ledger one of the first takes so like you know those unboxing videos that we used to watch back in the day at least that's when i used to watch more videos than i do today um when, when you open this up, right, you you pull out this uh, ledger, nano ass thing. The first thing that I notice when you compare a ledger to a treasure, a ledger feels like a high quality piece of equipment. A treasure feels like a plastic piece of crap. A treasure feels like garbage. A treasure is like, this is solid. There's nothing shaking. Yeah, it's odd it that they couldn't update the manufacturing detail on... Um, I have treasure and uh, this feels sturdy as fuck. No, I know, but in your opinion, I think everyone knows most people have kind of know that. What 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 do you think that shows? Like because what are you trying to get at is what I'm trying to say. Like to, because yeah, they both work the same. Let's say they both last the same amount of time. Who knows? But it's a little bit of effort, a little bit of detail within the company, and you can kind of catch a beat on that, is what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I it's just more of a first initial take on it. Um that I was, I was, I don't know want to say disappointed, but I was like, oh, wow. When I pulled out the treasure the first time, I was like, oh, wow, this feels, you know, I spent 60, 70 bucks plus 20 bucks for shipping or something like that. And, and it feels like it's a flimsy fucking piece of plastic. 
right? Where this feels, it's I like my treasures to it. It does not look like something you would want to steal if you didn't know what it was. And that, this just looks like a thumb drive. It, well, yeah, no, that that looks a little more stealable, just a little. But I mean, still, I don't true, even true. know. You're right. You're right. Just you're a right. little. Like I don't. I think if someone looked at my treasure, they would literally think it was like a little fucking game for something that they would never know about, like some stupid little like keychain game thing. And I kind of like that. But again, we're just as far as the me and Sam will dive more into the understanding of these products within. And I know there are subtle differences very subtle differences, but they are important to highlight because when it comes to connecting certain cryptocurrencies, you can have trouble depending on the chain. So like guys, remember it depends on wallet interaction and what kind of software they're using in order to be the front end. It's important to understand these things before you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy the treasure first and then I'm gonna buy a random ass crypto that I've never studied. It's like, that might not have synergy. So you gotta really kind of think about what's going on i don't know that for certain but no I no you're, I, I believe you're correct because when you're saying this is one of the things that i noticed when looking at the treasure site because my but i just had my buddy order a treasure uh just because that was before i purchased this your buddy's um, getting all the goodies <laughs> yeah i'm trying, I'm trying you're to look at his ass up aren't you oh all the all the 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 alpha related to security i was like bro you need to do this this and this if it takes you three months to do it you should do this before you really kind of like get into your fucking you're giving him five years of experience and fucking a month and, and and it's gonna be so so valuable but the treasure to your point though you're absolutely correct these support different networks and different operating systems so uh internet money love your shit. looking for that for, forward to that coming out um but this I think supports Android and iOS and like other operating systems, meaning, uh, and there's one more thing that I wanted to say about this and we can move on to something else. When, when you pull out this, this USB cord, right? There's an adapter you can get. This is USB-A here and that's USB-C right there. So this USB-A, you can put an adapter on here. I don't have one on my desk here, but I have one somewhere around where you take a USB-A and convert it to USB-C. What is What does that allow you to do? Well, your here's a phone uh this phone right here i could use as this is the burner phone that's why the sticker's still on the back uh you can you can plug this in USB-C, and then convert this and have it plugged into here to do transactions i believe so uh that is something that i would like to test because if i'm traveling and i and i want to have some access to crypto and i don't necessarily want to bring a laptop i would like to be able to do something like that the other last take on this, the last take on this is Treasure comes with a micro USD, USB, I'm sorry, micro. So micro, if you if you consider this, micro is the old technology, right? So we went from like USB-A uh, to micro USB, I believe it was, and then to USB-C, right? Well, there was two iterations of micro USBs. Micro USB is the one that looks like kind of like this, but there's a little bit of a hook on it. That's old technology. So you have Treasure that feels like flimsy and it's using old technology versus Ledger feels far sturdier. What about the price, Sam? Have you mentioned the price? Uh, price is about 15 to 20 bucks more. Oh, yeah. See, that's fair. Super fair. I, I, I mean, anything, if it was like, if we're, if you're getting into that 60 to $80 over, you're going to want to at least like look, pay attention. But when you're twenty dollars over, maybe they're just it kind of sounds like they're doing things to compete directly with Trezor almost. They're keeping that price point close. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't that wouldn't sway my deal. I don't know about twenty dollars when it comes to security. Mm, I'll pay <laughs> uh, I'll pay that. <laughs> no, just talking in general. Me and Sam are gonna read an article real quick, and then we're gonna invite KG on for a 15 minute powwow about all the things that yes. we want to help. We want I want him to react to this if, if you're listening to this. Uh, we're going to talk about the merge will not impact gas fees, transaction speeds, ease staking, a little article here. I was reading a bunch of these articles yesterday, and this is kind of what I was thinking in general. And I think this ETH 2.0, buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing, if it plays out in a negative way, which it could, you know, it could just not happen or whatever. You never know. Um, maybe this could be the bear. Like maybe this could be like, cause there's a lot of money moving and then it's like, Ooh, maybe six more months. And everyone's like, shit, fuck. <laughs> like we wrecked. So I'm saying like this to me, I get these weird little feelings of maybe a super buy the rumor, sell the news. And in the reality of the situation, this article confirms a lot of what I'm saying because it doesn't nothing. People want to see results. That's not what state proof of stake really is. It's like, it takes, it's just a network consensus. It's just, we're just trying to make this thing cleaner and more profitable and better. 
but it's not like, oh, your life's better now, Sam, 100%. Like, you're, it's not really like that. So, so, so I just to read the reality. That's awesome. Know. Let's pull up the article. So you, I like what you said, though, because the expectations around this merge are fairly, fairly fucking high. Um, because it's been six years of lead up and then they're building up, they're building up. And there's a lot of people who don't know actually what's going on. And if that bubble pops and they realize that you don't get faster transaction speeds and you don't get cheaper gas fees, uh, that could be like that rug pull from underneath that momentum that tanks everything and helps everything uh, sell off. But let's plus get into the Dox this. coins plus everything. It could be good timing. If you watch Vitalik's wallet, uh, I don't think he's bought back yet, guys. So why don't we just wait till he buys again? Cause he sells the top. And then he buys the bottom. He buys the bottom because he makes the bottom probably. So, you know, just pay attention. And he goes live and tells you he dumps. So he doesn't give a fuck. He's just telling you how the shit goes. He's like a robot. Anyway, let's get into this real quick. I'm going to read the first section. Um, let me pull this up. Can you make it a little bit bigger? Yes, sir. Please. And then we'll get into this. Justin, the merge will not impact gas fees, transaction speed, ETH staking. This is going to be an interesting uh, article about this. And if we have time later, before KG comes on, we're going to also talk about the tornado cash if we have time. But uh, you want to go ahead and start reading this off? No, that was good. If you if you bring it back out right here, that's perfect. Sorry, I'm a freaking noob, and I made my screen on the other side go way really small. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's so, perfect guys, for the viewer though. This is really important information, in my opinion. Um, this is the hottest news right now. This is what you should be paying attention to right now, other than HSI auctions and earning that sweet Icosa nectar every single day. So Ethereum.org, the official website of Ethereum, has updated eight misconceptions about the merge as the community awaits the anticipation upgrade. On September 15th, the merge will not reduce gas fees, make transactions faster, or enable withdrawals. <laughs> Withdrawal of staked ETH sounds lit. These changes will happen with the subsequent completion of the surge, verge, purge, and splurge phase, and the Shanghai upgrade. Have I ever heard a word salad like that? that that's like, Sam, we got to lie real quick. Make some shit up. <laughs> Literally, like, like I fucking rugged everyone in my whole entire chat. Make us four words up that we can do some word salading on. Is literally what that feels like. Like that's an argument with like a mer merge, like surge, man. merge, surge, verge, purge, splurge. It sounds like <laughs> fucking describing somebody jizzing on something or whatever. Like, what are you talking about? It's like, a, it's like this. That's a metallic sex life when he's at his house. <laughs> merge, merge, purge, splurge, sitting at his computer. Ethereum clears eight mis. Thank first of all, Ethereum. I want to thank you so much for clearing these misconceptions for us after six years of waiting in line to everyone about what you were doing. You are now admitting that you were doing exactly just trying to switch everything up because you fucked up. You screwed up. You should have done this when the network was not filled with friggin' heads and it was the craziest motherfucking thing that ever it's created. Because it, it, it exploded and they, because they wrote this in the beginning. So it's not like they didn't know. They wrote it right in the beginning. I read it. Ethereum clears eight misconceptions about gas fees, transaction speeds, staking after the merge. Ethereum.org updated eight misconceptions about the merge on August 17th as anticipated date of the up, upgrade draws near. Ethereum is transitioned from proof of work to proof of stake. Consensus with the merger of Ethereum mainnet and beacon chain, it will reduce power usage by 99%. Users don't need to upgrade software, transfer funds, or send ETH in order to move to proof of stake Ethereum. However, users need to be aware of scams during the merge and misconceptions about the merge. Misconception one, merge will reduce gas fees. The merge will change the consensus mechanism to proof of stake, but not expand network capacity or throughput to lower gas fees. In fact, the gas fee depends on the Ethereum network demand. Just like I said, Sam, when the prices of this stuff is $5,000 for a swap, it does not matter what you're doing in the background. It does not work right. It doesn't, it's not working. It's not being able to have enough capacity for what people want. Mm -hmm. So they're basically just telling you like, it's going to happen again. They just said it. This is the official website. However, the transition to proof of stake will help focus on increasing scalability in the surge phase, guys. Remember the important surge phase since they defined it so well for us up top. Uh, the surge phase through sharding and roll-ups to significantly reduce fees. So 
However, the transition to proof of stake will help on increasingly scale scalability in the surge phase through sharding and rollups. I guess it, it just means like they're trying to upgrade it over time and it'll slowly so, reduce fees. One, one thing, um, well, that's the next stage. I think this was merge, surge, splurge, splashy dishwashers or something. I don't know. But the surge phase looks like it is going to be focused on reducing uh, gas fees. One thing that this will do, even though like it's not going to do anything, there's a tiny, tiny, I think a tiny, tiny percent increase in, in block time right from like 13 seconds to 12 seconds maybe but uh what this will do is it will give confidence to the market confidence that that things are going to move forwards and i wouldn't be surprised if yes it took absolutely forever to go from you know saying that it's going to switch to proof of stake then to actually switching to proof of stake so whoops maybe that was five years but then going from the merge to the surge is probably going to happen in a very 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 compressed time frame relatively speaking because the proof of work to proof of stake is a big change but going from proof of stake to the surge and through sharding and roll-ups, as I mentioned here is is probably a much more trivial or, or less uh, resource intense thing to do with less issues associated with it. So I would expect that the market gains a lot more confidence in Ethereum by going through this. All right, let me read the next one. Let me let me pound through these quick. And then we'll jump KG in. Misconception two: merge will increase transaction speeds. The transaction speeds will not increase much as blocks will produce will be produced only ten percent faster on proof of stake and proof of work. Introduce the transaction finality and epochs concepts. However, users can expect a faster transaction speed of 100,000 transactions per second after the completion of all phases has been upgraded. Let us let me get a date on completion. That would be lit. But uh, no, we just do, it, it, it's pretty much just like they're starting. It's just, it sucks that this is the way it is. It's not easy to market. Like, it's not easy to market a merge to proof of stake. It's like the most unsexy thing to market, but you, they got to spin it in their favor. Like, you can't. So, but this is, this is, I mean, they're already the largest like network in terms best. of users by far. And I mean, if, if that's accurate, even if it takes them three years, where do we have in, in, let's say five years, it takes them five years to get to the completion of these other things. A uh, hundred thousand transactions per second. Dude, is by then we will be so fucking rich, dude. I, the whole game will look different. Correct, but there's but there's not enough users in crypto yet, right? We know that. That's all about adoption. What happens in five years? A gargantuan increase in in that. So we'll uh, keep reading in a second. I'm going to transition KG on. Unless it, give me a thumbs up when you can, KG uh, below. And I and I, you good? Um, okay, perfect. Um, I, I have a feeling he understands this concept, probably read a couple articles and thinks about this stuff a little bit. And I'd love his insight on this because I want to know, is this complete fool's gold, snake oils talk? And I know it's going to happen eventually, but like as far as user effect, like will anyone see any dramatic changes in anything? Let's transition them in. Bu, 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 bu. KG in the house. What's, good? what's up? Oh, what's, I didn't mean to flick you off. My fingers messed up. I forgot. I, I tried yeah, to give you a peace yeah, yeah, sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the crypto in the morning gang sign. Don't worry. What up? <laughs> How y'all so doing KG, today? KG, can we talk to you for a second? Can, I'm going to let you and Sam go back and forth for a second, but I'm just going to set the floor. What the F is going on with ETH 2.0? I've heard the same thing the whole entire time. It said they said it's not going to change much, but in reality, in the future, of course it will. Of course it will. But that's not what people want. That's not sexy, you know. That's not going to give you a Lamborghini, right? Like you're not off the E 2.0 merge. But they, it is marketing. I understand. Okay, so it's not like I'm like all oh, these liars. You know what I mean? Can you tell me a little bit about maybe what to expect, what you think, and what you know about E 2.0 in merge in general? Sure. So, full, okay. Full disclosure, I've, I've got two kiddos right over there. So if you hear any random screams, just bear with me. And yeah, no second, worries, dude. On that. You're good. Thank you. I'm not the foremost expert on the merge, but I do have a couple opinions about it, such as I don't. There, there is part of me that wonders. 
yes, one second, okay. There is part of me that wonders if if it's ever going to happen or anytime soon because we have a whole system of miners that are financially reliant upon the success hey, of Ethereum. And hi, <laughs> and so I don't know. I I I don't know if a if it's ever going to launch. B I think the sharding part of the technology is going to be the the crux of what makes it better. And I think that's what's going to maybe help with allowing more transactions to occur because there's obviously some reason they're going from proof of work to proof of stake, right? They wouldn't go through all this headache and turmoil and negative talk just to do something that's equal. It wouldn't make any sense. Why not continue to do what they're they doing? They won't make it to so the next bull market with $10,000 gas fees. It, yeah, how could they? They can't. You, I was what, literally, there was weeks on end where I had $2,000 plus gas fees and the market was a moving. You had to make your move, Sam. You had to. You were like, oh shit. Like, exactly. No, it's going to blow off top. There's not a, you could blow on this thing and it's going to the moon. You all know it. Everyone knows it. All the signs are there. And then you're like $5,500 gas fee for a end stake on a, you're just like, I can't do anything. And then you see how it works in real time. You're like, oh, the plebs don't get to do things. They don't get to make moves. Vitalik only gets to make moves. Richard only gets to make moves. Guys with huge ETH bags that have never an endless ETH. You know what I mean, Sam and KG? Yeah. Uh, that's it's interesting what you about the sh charting. Um, KG, do you want to uh, please share any more thoughts on the merge? Um, I would like a uh, an exclusive update on internet money's wallet if you if you want to get into that a little bit. Oh man, I'm always happy to talk internet money. Uh, Hell and, yeah! <laughs> so so before I, there is a video I'll share with you guys that you can share with your audience. That is probably the best breakdown of the Ethereum Ethereum 2.0 explained. I actually just shared it on the internet money twitter it's an amazing explainer video for exactly what ethereum 2.0 is and i think everybody who's curious about comparing ethereum 2.0 to pulse chain or just in general should watch that video it's amazing dude thank you so much i'll pull that up right now that's amazing I, that's a great that's exactly perfect timing right. i didn't even I, I didn't even do it because of this i just posted it this morning <laughs> that's, that's, kg i'm getting it dude, right now ever since we talked let me just say this real quick add moment Ever since we talked, we had like an emotional stream at some point out of nowhere for no reason. We were just fucking feeling it, I guess. And dude, watching you go up while Richard was talking on spaces and show your stuff and do a nice shill and just be appropriate and nice to everyone, but do be effective in the same time. It was friggin' lit. I was lit Thanks, up bro. like a Christmas tree. Dude, I was DMing <laughs> everyone. I was like, can <laughs> <laughs> I actually watched your replay uh, of that, and and I heard you say KG. Is that KG right now? And I was like, my oh boy, that boy GRC. <laughs> I just remember being oh, that like, was cool. Oh, yeah, man, right in front of Richard and everyone. It was good, and I love to see that he did not directly attack anyone because that shows that he wants people to build on his shit. Like he's not gonna, he's not an idiot, right? Like he's not gonna tell everyone to build on his shit to go fuck off. Like, but uh, no, okay, no way know. because. No, no way, because, you know, Richard's obviously a very intelligent individual. And as much as, as awesome as Hex is, it can't be the only thing that's operating on the chain. It just, Early fail. you know, ch chains need developers, chains need new users coming to, to the chain, and users come to the chain because there's reason to come to the chain. And that has to be all these other awesome projects that are being built. It's not just one, one project that's going to drive a chain. So Richard knows that are all these projects, not only are they bringing developers and their user base, they're also bringing money. So when you hire, yeah, like on our team, we have nine, you know, well, I guess seven of them actually working on the blockchain technology. That's money that's being paid to human beings. That's then investing their time and resources into increasing the strength of Pulse Chain. He knows that. I know And their crypto that. devs, we wonder what they're buying. Crypto. Well, <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, like, of course. It's like they're all buying of crypto. Course. Like it's the best. It's like, what else would you do if you're that smart enough to be a dev and understand a blockchain? You're like, oh, wait, they, they just make money forever on this shit. You just put it right back. Of course. Can of you, course. 
Can you talk about some of the updates and where you're at and cool features and things with internet money? I, sure. I want to I hear so, about that. <laughs> okay, sure. Of course, of course. So we actually just released a video. Uh, we are officially in alpha testing mode, which means that the the app is now on a phone. And it's we got we have it on Android for now. And the next step is going to be getting it on an Apple phone and a Chrome extension. But it was so cool. I was actually, instead of showing like the design on, you know, the, the design software, I was able to actually in this video hold a phone in my hand and show the process of actually generating a 24 word seed phrase. And then I was able to send myself on that account pulse, test pulse. So it's our wallet is now actually functioning on pulse yeah, chain test cool. net. Beautiful. Yeah, it's... From an, from an, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Thank you for fucking idea. working. <laughs> Thank you for working, man. Seven devs, dude. That's impressive, man. I don't care what Thank anyone you. says. It's impressive to me. I don't. I'm not the. I'm not the god of the devs. But uh, I'm walking around in a crypto world where there's only three real fucking cryptos and a couple other good things going on. And we are so early, and people need to be aggressive like you're being. They need to understand that we're that early. Like we need people that have teams that are focused on specific functionality of certain things, not just one dude copy and pasting a meme coin and then putting his whole life fucking reputation on it. You know what I mean? I just don't, I just, I love the intellectual integrity. I love that you don't blow it in people's faces because I think you're confident in your skills and your team. We have an amazing team. I am very confident and I agree with what you said. Tell, tell your dad we say hi because uh, he's awesome. Um, can I you, want a team, Sam. I know, me too, me too. It's exciting. I was that was literally. I want my, a team. That was my question. That I was going to ask KG. Um, so you seven devs. Can you talk us through? So you have seven people working on this. How how does that work? What, what are they split up into? Like how is like dev one? What are they working on? Dev two. Like how how does that work? So we actually have nine developers, but the reason I said seven for blockchain is because two of them, one of them is building the website and one of them is um, strictly design. So seven are actually working on uh, the the app, the Android and iOS app, the Chrome extension, the smart contracts, because we have the WD smart contract as well as the, because, you know, we're giving away free crypto when users download the wallet that in and of itself is going to be a smart contract so they're building that and then yeah yeah the apps the mobile apps the chrome extension and the smart contracts so each each person so so you have somebody maybe for the chrome extension because they specialize in that shit you have somebody in like for android and they kind of specialize in app development or something and then is that kind of how it works so we have so we have a project manager, which is not included in one of the devs. That's just someone else on the team. And then we have the the lead dev who then so he counts as one. And then we have one. And it's like a tree almost because the, the lead dev is the overarching, like the general contractor, I, I guess. You know, he'll come in and swing the hammer when he has to. But he's just uh, one second. One second. Yep. This is this is fascinating, uh, fascinating stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him down for one second. Hold that thought, guys. I just want to remind everyone about a couple of things while I can. KG, get your. Uh, I'll give you two minutes. Just uh, give the kids a little. Oh, <laughs> I'm just. I don't know anything about having kids. That's a joke. I'm sorry. No abuse. Um, but guys, we have silver. I want silver on the show. You guys know that. I've been dude. To be honest, Sam, he was the first person I ever turned my notifications on Twitter. Oh now, wow. That's when I learned the button. I was like, why do I, how do I watch this guy all the time? And then I was like, oh, there's a notifications button. And it was like, like last year, like real early. I told him that this morning. And I said, well, it was him and Richard maybe. Maybe I, like at the same-ish time. But I have a tweet out, guys, and it's, go it's getting a little bit tasty, these numbers. We got 300 likes, 90 retweets. And that was – I told it I wanted to give it a little fr breath of fresh air. I want back on it, guys. If you're in here and you could do me a favor and retweet this exact tweet, we need a, we need 150 more, um, 160 more or something, and we have silver on tomorrow morning. 
So that's going to be flipping fun. Yes. Okay, so let's do it. Let's let's bring the goat back in, guys. Man, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be sure to retweet. I'd I'd love to see him on on your show. You definitely deserve that. You're, you guys bring awesome content. So, thanks, dude. It's because people like you who come on and share their passions <laughs> and what they're excited about come on and chat with us and are willing to answer questions for us, and, like trying to learn and and, and go to golf learn. tournaments and sponsor twenty thousand dollar holes and do all. It, it shows me a lot. Sam might not know about those specifics, but I can see it, man. I can see it. Like I can see you're trying to do everything. You're trying to get a part of this. You're trying to be all, and be a p- good person in, in between all of that. You know, like it's a, you can do both. You do not have to be a fucking scum lord to do all this stuff. You really, really don't. You just don't. There's no. so much value. You just can like like make awesome stuff, but it takes a certain amount of emotional fitness to get to the point where you want to create and build and you know be a decent guy. You know, it takes a long time to get there. To be honest. So 100% it's uh, it's a mental discipline for sure. So with Internet Money Wallet, um, what are some of the features that are going to be dope or like, right? Because I think of a wallet and I think of several things that like I would like to have in a wallet tracking, right? But not just tracking for uh, one of the things that I've noticed is I've done more LP is Ethereum fees. I can track that shit, but the fees for and maybe I just don't know where this is or i don't want to click through and go to etherscan but the tracking for doing a trade right like so you go to um uniswap and then you're paying a fee there but all we think about is eth fees but there's the other fee there you just don't see that fee well what i would like to see those fees and an aggregation of those over time or maybe per month or like lots of things like that what cool things uh have you kind of like ironed out because i know sometimes before we were talking about different stuff but it was still like depending on where we're at you know, you, you want to continue to iterate, but like, have you, have you ironed out any of the features yet? We've ironed out some features that are going to be in version one for sure. And I think the one that I'm most proud of, and I think it's, it's underrated that we don't currently have this in wallets right now is pricing for your coins beyond what MetaMask does. So on MetaMask right now, you're lucky if you're if you're on the Ethereum network and the price of your coin is there, right? And it, to show you the value of what that particular... So if I have a million hex, I can see, okay, I, I have $50,000, right? They only do that on Ethereum or mainly on Ethereum and only the tokens that are listed on CoinMarketCap. So it's very limited pricing, pricing feeds, which I think when we're talking about converting people from legacy finance, I think that's a very important feature. As well as me as an investor, I want to know what my portfolio is worth. So we're doing a very unique method of aggregating pricing data to the wallet. And that is, instead of relying on a company like CoinMarketCap, which is very limited, you, first of all, the ultimate would probably be to build out our own technology, which is something we're talking about on the roadmap. But for now, connecting to a software like deck screener that all the chains all the coins they the coin can be listed for five minutes and it already has a price it already has a chart the internet money wallet can pull that data and for the most obscure token you can see your portfolio value and then make, taking that aggregating that data into one big portfolio balance and being able to track that on the lifetime of a chart so you can see your obscure crypto portfolio for me, that is so important, and it makes crypto more real. It's not just a weird jazzicon with 18 decimals on your screen. Hey, back in the day, it used to show your your accumulative value at the top of MetaMask, I remember. It doesn't do that anymore. You can't see your accumulative crypto as like a value. Did it do that? Top. It did. I remember back in the day, I used to be like, look at all that. It would be dope. So what you're talking about oh, is dang, all yes. of all those coins being in there, uh, like if there was a feature back in the day and they changed it, why would you change that? I don't know why, but I don't know, but I remember exactly. maybe it was because this controversy with all these coins, these new coins that came in that had no price attached to it and it would confuse everyone. So maybe once, because maybe Possible. when that on, because it was years ago, this was probably years ago, like now two years ago, maybe 
And I remember looking at it for the first time because that's when I was looking at it all the time, you know, paying, trying to pay attention a little bit. And um, I remember saying like, wow, all these cryptos together sure do equal a good amount. Like it was Polkadot. Maybe it was on a different wallet too. You know, that could have been the case. Um, but that's not the point. I think they should do that. I, I would like that feature. Like very much. And, and for any coin with any decent press, like it gets on there quick. Even like weight tokens got theirs up. And I think it just like depends somewhat on the trade volume. It seems like, like if there's a lot of trade volume, it seems like it goes up a lot faster. But maybe it has to do with interacting with those companies directly. Do you know the answer to that? What for coin market cap coin gecko? Like if you want your coin shit to pop up right away, let's say your coin just came out on Ethereum, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You want the number to pop up ASAP Rocky because that's people don't trade when they don't see the number for whatever reason. Um, what can you like force that with money? Can you like manually pay someone uh, to do this for me or you? So if you want to see on MetaMask, it has to be on CoinMarketCap. And if you can force it with money, we haven't found the way. We've applied for CoinMarketCap for internet money five times already. And we continue to get denied on the basis of volume, which doesn't make a lot of sense because we've had 100K volume weeks. But, and also other projects get listed that don't even exist yet. Zero holders, zero volume. So how can you deny me on the basis of volume? Now we've tried there's crypto, to seek out. There's like three cryptos with volume. Like there's no cryptos right. with volume. Like literally, like so, like there's like you know what I mean. Like there's like a top ten, everything outside of that, no volume. So I personally think there's a way to pay professional, some an insider on there. We're still working towards getting listed, so I can't say that I have figured it out yet. I found things that don't work, but haven't found out what does. I'll ask We're around at some. Uh, I'll I'll poke at some big brains that mess around in that stuff. See if we can get an answer for that. But uh, maybe I could probably get an answer for that if there is like some. I'm good at kind of like digging up random ass information when it appeals to me. And I and you know I I think about building coins and stuff all day long. It's all like you know what can you think about really in this space? It's so early. If you it's so hard not to Sam. And I know Sam's writing a white paper right now. Like, and I'm not allowed to talk about oh, shit. Good for you, bro. Yeah, no, you know, we just were, you know, trying to not learn. Not to talk but, about shit, but you say it. <laughs> I know, I, I didn't say any specifics, okay? Yep, I didn't yep. say any specifics. They, they call that in the movie business in Hollywood a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> That's a teaser. No, but we're trying to, you know, there's a, dude, every day that I'm using crypto, I want you to know both of uh, the audience more, because you guys already know this. I run into problems. I run into issues. I run into things that I don't like. I don't want to provide liquidity and sit next to my computer for maximum gain all day long. There's like a lot of like things like value propositions within there that, that just can be fixed, but nobody wants to Except this community is weird as shit. This community is weird, man. That a lot of go getters, a lot of guys that are willing to go to zero, man. And I, and I mean that. And I like, I think there's a lot, like all three of us guys are willing to sell out for what we believe in all the fucking way. And, uh, and then, you know, you just don't find that that much anymore. And I feel like in the Hex community, there's a lot of guys that really do want to change. Of course, there's going to be bottom feeders that put on a fucking collared shirt for the first time and say they were in Hollywood the whole time. You know what I mean? There's always people like that. But I find guys like you, Silver, not everyone's building, but geez, they're really punching hard, teaching people stuff, getting involved. There's so much value to give in crypto like there's unlimited like i'm finding this out by day by day i'm like oh my god i could sit here all day and just help people because it's fun to me but it's important too and i couldn't find anything else in my life that felt important like bodybuilding was fun and i wanted people to feel like healthy but that's it i wanted people to feel like healthy not die i didn't want everyone to have a nine pack this is not what it's always about for some people but in this it's like you want to protect yourself from a future of turmoil potentially like that's what it feels like when you talk to someone about crypto to me and that's why it gives me such of that juice that juice where i'm like man i want to do something i want to you know it takes hard work and it's a long shot and you can go to zero on anything but it's i love this community same man i uh that, go ahead kg I'll, I'll just say i love this community too and to your point about like it's weird that this community is filled with not only builders but incredibly intelligent, innovative, passionate people. I think it's because, well, Richard, he started effectively a thought movement in the crypto space, right? 
Bitcoin, even though in it itself is anti-establishment in terms of the government and fiat money, Bitcoin itself became the establishment in the crypto space. And so Richard, with his influence in the Bitcoin community, and even though he had to completely make himself look like a, you know, in his own words, maybe a fool for being such a Bitcoin maxi for so long, he not only went against the establishment, he went against himself and he updated his worldview and he followed what he was passionate about because he knew that it was the right thing for him and he, he saw the problems with Bitcoin. So that that's the leader of this thought movement. And I think that's why it attracts other thought leaders effectively. Yes, yes, correct. You I think, think about that, Sam, you're from that, afar, that, kind that, of community wise, like you, you know, you're not much of a community, like, you know, you're kind of like, you just do, you do your thing all day long, pretty much. And, um, but you, you're in it now, like you see it, you see what's going on. You, you, you could watch this from afar and see pretty clearly. What do you think about what's going on? Sometimes I want affirmation, like, are we, am I fucking insane? Well, like, the, the, is the, the this wild? Is this like off? Are we off at all? Or are we just on it? What, what KG was saying, though, is that, the, you know, when you look at a company, and that's, you know, effectively what this is to a certain degree, even though it's decentralized, it's semantics of like how you describe it. But the leader or the, the person that people turn to, right, that person is who sets the culture, right? That person is who sets the culture. So I, I do have some thoughts about like setting a culture that you know, really focuses on material shit that doesn't fucking matter, right? Because then you're setting the culture and you're going to have people who don't like, you know, maybe want to go deeper than that, right? And and I don't know if that's the best thing for the world, but that's not for me to choose. Like I get to choose my life. So I do have some thoughts about that. But what KG was saying is when you have, um, when you bring forth like innovative or you have the capacity to go back and say that, hey, I was wrong. This is the reason why I was wrong. This next thing is better. Like you get people that are flexible in the way that they think, right? And and that in and of itself is like a little superpower because so many people get stuck in a status quo of how they live their life. And that's the only thing that we can be sure of is, is death and taxes, right? So when you when you like hold on to a belief system and you don't change and you you keep that rigidity in your mind about your belief system and you're not capable of understanding the new thing is better because of the way you you've set yourself up flexibility becomes like a superpower and we've been in that way for so long and when you present this to the world and you talk about that what you attract is other people who either are that way or want to be that way right? Or appreciate that. So then you get together this collective, this group, this community here that is flexible in the way that they think and evolve and smart and talented and all of those things. The, the only thing where I'm like, I don't know about is all like, you know, the shiny object bullshit stuff, which is fun. It's cool. It's right. I'm sure it is. But there's people who are still very I don't think early. It's cool. I mean, like, it's cool. I, I own a Tesla. I'm not saying that's super fancy, oh, or no, well, it, but it's cool. They're fucking incredible pieces of equipment. <laughs> the, the, more the shiny object syndrome is not Tesla. That's the shiny you made a good purchase syndrome. You, you know, like, that's like, that's like you just bought the best car ever created in history. And when you buy these dog coins for thousands of dollars, you could purchase probably a down payment on a Tesla or something that could actually enhance your life directly. Or something of, you know, depending on your tax bracket or whatever kind of money you're making. You know what I mean? Like these meme coins suck up a lot of U.S. dollar, dude. You, dude, I'm te- dude, dude, I'm telling you. I think that's a topic I'd like to talk about too. We got all these U.S. dollars and everyone wants to be the pump and dumper, right? Like, so basically what people do is they make these meme coins. They hype them up as much as they can. But they make that the reason they make meme coins is because there's no intellectual integrity there. So when it goes to zero, their reputation doesn't necessarily go to zero. It goes to like 50 percent like they like they're not ruined forever. But it's kind of like you're that dude who was shilling the dog. You put a million dollars on the dog, dude. What the fuck were you doing? But like no one's going to hate you for it. But at the, at the same time, it's like 
if you if you if you pay attention to chain analytics at all, like you know exactly what these guys do. If there's not that much volume, guys, you can pretty much just watch it. Like it go to PLSD and then top 10 trading wallets, and then you know, you're good. Like, so understand it's just important to understand that product market fit in a real product is what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. I'm not looking for something silly. I want don't, not, no more silly, for, but there's so much U.S. dollar sample, like, like billions, hundreds of billions. And even within this community, millions, millions and millions of dollars going to these other outlets. And Sam, if, if I had the list for you, I don't even know what they're called anymore. There's a hundred more. They were coming out this week. Billionaire Hex dude comes out with PZEN or whatever. And Maddie was on there talking about that shit yesterday. It's garbage. It's trash. It, I'm sorry. I'll read the white paper and give it a once through and look back at that, by the way, before that gets recorded. But you know what I mean? I'm done. You, the utility is what's coming forth, right? Like the utility, which we're, we're shifting to focus on, on utility. K, KG, what is, and speaking of utility, uh, what is some utility or value or interesting things that you guys are maybe like working through or like kind of, you know, at that point where you're you're not sure how to move forward in it, that the community might be able to help you with or, or tag you and shit or share information with you. What are what are do you have any of those things that you guys are like, you know, maybe running up into a wall a little bit where anybody could help in, in a certain way? At this moment in time, not to have an inflated ego, because it's not that. It's just a statement of fact. We're honestly flowing really good right now. And we're, we're, we don't have, like, you know, Bruce Lee might say, oh, here, check it out. I keep him on the fridge. Right there. There he is. <laughs> Bruce Lee might say, we're being like water. And, you know, yeah, sure, we, we hit some blocks here and there, but we just find a way to stay malleable and flexible. Everything is going really good right now. We're not. There's no major roadblocks that we, that we're up against. I'm bullish on I am. Yeah. So when, when you when you come out when you have like a V2 of Alpha or, or Beta coming out or something, let us know and we can pull it up here. And I'm sure bullish knows a way to like have uh, like I can download it or something and then we can play with it on the phone and share and talk about it on on screen anything you said. KG, I love when you come in here because you're a busy guy. So you come yes, in. Yes, I'm in the APK. I can load it up on the anything. emulator and show it off. Yeah, we, anything you want to send to the private chat, we can pop up. And I and I was planning on playing that Ethereum 2.0 game changer proof of stake, the beacon chain sharding and docking explained um, that you mentioned earlier. I want to I want to say hi to that super chat. There was another super chat before that that I starred, but then I forgot. So it was I can't remember who it was. If you could remind me who that was, that'd be great. If anybody knows the time to, exactly in a link for the Richard thing, I will be live stream partying that 100%. That's my shit. I love doing that shit because it's fun and it's in the middle of the day and uh I love it. So, guys, $50 super chat. I love my hex staking ladder. 120 stakes out 15 years. Good job, guys. Yes, Good for sir. you. You're going to be a very rich person at some point. Hopefully, you spread that ladder out a little bit. Um, but um, yes, and if anyone, it does sound like the at some point, Sam and KG, I'm, I'm running into an issue with the channel where we're getting the the information that me and Sam is studying is getting so nuanced that it's like. I don't even want to say all of it because it's like half make you liable because you can only like when I'm talking to Sam, I'm talking to someone that I kind of can predict, right? Like I, I know what Sam's kind of like. So it's like I keep running into this problem where we want to talk about all these things, but there are limitations when you're talking on the internet, in my opinion, like, and I'm, I'm a pretty like low risk dude. Like, and you know, this, this isn't about what Sam or anyone thinks in particular, but I want to get into these topics really bad really bad with really smart guys and if so there will be some sort of private group where i can filter things out and talk on a platform where i'm not spitting all over the internet because it's 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 turning out that i really can't say whatever i want on here truthfully yeah it's just because i hurt someone that's broke that has their last two thousand dollars and they're listening to me talk about lp do you know what i mean kg i and do i'm like when you become when you become an influencer, you are you're now beholden to a degree to the people that are influenced by you. 
And so you've got to be careful with what you say. you got to be careful with the things you push or don't push because people trust you and they're making decisions based on your words. Well, even if you said, don't make any decisions based on my words. Well, that's not going to change that. Completely, completely agree. Yeah, I'm going to we can uh, we can end it here. I would love. Hey, next time you're at, you're at the office and um, you're ready to go, go with some you know, some good info from the team. Just, just DM me, dude. I'm every single day and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm streaming all the time, you know, like I'm taking this seriously. I don't care what people think, whether they think I should or should not. It doesn't really matter to me. I am enjoying giving people information. I truly think it's valuable. I really do. When I go to bed, I think I'm doing the right thing. KG, do, to wrap us up here, would you give us like an ele elevator pitch of, of like, you know, internet money, because I'm sure there's people who don't know or are not aware of it, and then we'll wrap things up. Sure. So elevator pitch of what we're doing, we're building a, a multi-chain EVM wallet that is native to Pulse Chain. That just basically means it's an Ethereum-based wallet, and you can connect to all the different Ethereum chains. We have two tokens. We have internet money, which is a deflationary, deflationary, peer-to-peer -peer digital cash that will operate on Binance Smart Chain and Pulse Chain. You hold it on Binance Smart Chain. When we launch on Pulse Chain, you get a one-to-one -one airdrop. You see, you have it on two chains. You see how he kind of did that, Sam, with the jumping over there to make it easierly accessible, but still making it a one-for-one -one just manually? It's a really good idea. Thank you. We And then the, the absolute innovation and beauty of what we're building is our token WD or Internet Money Wallet Dividend, longest name in crypto. But when a user performs a swap with in the app from one asset to another, a fee is charged. It's like all other crypto wallets. The difference with the fee in our, the Internet Money Wallet is A, it's the least expensive amongst the big competitors. B, the fee is charged in the form of that blockchain's native coin. So if you're swapping from internet money to hex on pulse chain you're going to pay that fee in pulse the holders of our wd token get that fee how does that work all fees a hundred percent of the fees that the wallet generates get locked up in an immutable no admin key smart contract so we're talking pulse eth bnb whatever chain wd is on the the smart contract locks that up and then the holder of the wd token without staking, without delegating, without locking up their tokens in any way, shape, or form, can claim their passive income as frequently as every block. It's all day, every day, passive income in the form of the blockchain's native coin. Oh, I love this. Hey, G, we would also love to talk to you sometime in private, if you wouldn't mind, with just us so we can brainstorm, because, you know, there's not too many open-minded people that you could brainstorm with, and I really just want to make things better. Like, And you're already on a path. Like, you know, you, you know what's going on over at your section. I want to learn stuff, man. There's a, there's a lot to be done in this in this industry, and there's not there's enough people that want to fix stuff. There's just guys that want to be rich for no reason. And that's where that premium comes in, a lot of that meme coin action, a lot of that, you know. I think we need to, like, motivate people to be more aggressive as far as, like, this This is a groundbreaking technology. Don't let someone else take the reins on it if, they, if you have the passion in your heart. And the, it, it doesn't matter how smart you are, guys. Forget that word. If you don't think you're smart, if you think you're smart, people told me I was the dumb fuck my whole entire life. Literally. My teachers told me it. My family told me it. And they didn't say you're a dumb fuck. They just, you know, they alluded to like, you know, you're in, you're in fucking idiot classes. You don't care. You don't pay attention. You do drugs. And I was just like, yep, yeah, that's, I guess that's me. You know, and, and then you get older and you're like, this is just about who cares more. It's just about who actually cares. And that's why I, my filter process generally starts with the founder. I look right at the founder. I'm like, why would he care? Why, why would Alex care? He's rich already. And then you learn. You learn. You're like, oh, wow, he seems like a great guy. Look at him, man. He's really putting in work. He's coding. He's telling the whole community about everything. He's trying to be as transparent as you can be. You know, there's always insider trading. I'm sorry, there is. And, um, and that's just the way it is. I'm not saying him in particular, but just in general. Anyway, guys, great show. Amazing shit. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming the Richard Hart um, and on Valuetainment. If somebody could give me a link or somebody could give me an exact time, I'll set up that thumbnail a little faster because I just don't know the exact time on that. Um, thank you so much, KG, for coming on. Sam, it's been incredible.
Appreciate you. Appreciate you, KG. Thank you for your time and yep. what you got, what you're doing to the community. Peace out, guys. Yes. Richard Hart Thank created a fucking lit ass coin. Hey, have a good one, man. Young folks, you tripping on them, motherfucker? Richard Hart. Richard Hart. Bought my hex from the fucking start. Oh, hey. Point one in every day we mark. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Checking my metamask moving. Look at the hex he has mooning. Looking at why they be choosing. Peter is why they be losing. Pro chains out, gonna get me a check. He's gas up and got me a mess. Remember the times he died, collect. Hex I me mean, eating, I'm dying in the best. Getting this back like a year ago. Getting this post, I ain't letting go. Swerving the ring like a Lambo. Getting this back like a year ago. Getting this post, I ain't letting go. Swerving the ring like a Lambo. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. Got paid on big payday and I had a hairy start. Now I'm checking on my pulls just to check my heart. Buy my hex from the fucking start. Sacrificing all this bread like I'm rich and hurt. 